Now, if you're someone that goes hiking or you want to be off grid for long periods and you want a phone that can do that, so last for up to seven to even 10 days on a single charge, that is basically a battery bank, then this could be the phone for you. It's from Doogie, it's called their VMAX. Now the VMAX has a incredibly large battery within it. It's basically a power bank with a phone around it because its capacity is 2,200 milliamp hours. Obviously there is a trade-off, as you can see clearly, in the size of it and its weight, but it's chunky and it's a rugged phone too. So we've got drop resistance up to 1.5 meters, IP68 waterproof rating to it as well, and it has a six, 0.53 inch IPS panel, 120 hertz refresh rate, powered by the Dimensity 1080 with 12 gigabytes of RAM, and it does have a 108 megapixel main camera alongside a 20 megapixel night camera. So this has some infrared lights with it, two of them, LEDs, infrared ones, that light up the area so you can take nighttime photos. If you need that, well, it's got it, and an ultra wide that's 16 megapixels. The front camera that is 32 megapixels and I'll be going over this phone in a bit of detail and let you know all of the pros and cons here of the VMAX. So this is what is included with our VMAX. We have a warranty card here. They do include a screen protector and this here is just a little pack for cleaning the screen before you apply that. And we've got a SAR value specification there too, user manual and then our charger and charging cable. Now this charger here it is 33 watts. First thing you'll notice that when you get this phone and you handle it, it is wow, this is heavy, but very solid, well made, really well put together. Chunky phone because it's 27 millimeters, the thickness of it, and it weighs 543 grams. So we have a capacitive always on fingerprint reader here on the right hand side, up and down volume buttons. They're made out of plastic. This part is uh, plastic here with some screws that are screwed into place, all of it and a textured plastic back right here. So with our cameras, we've got a 108 megapixel main camera, 20 megapixel night vision camera with dual IR LEDs right here. And then we've got our dual tone LED flash on the side, 16 megapixel camera, microphone, and rubber around it. Now, because it's got all of this rubber here, it is military grade drop protection that it does have. So this is the standard, this is 810H that it has. It means it can handle drops of 1.5 meters onto concrete and it will be fine. Gorilla glass on the front of the 6.53 inch IPS screen. And down the bottom here, you'll see we've got a microphone type C port that has a gasket over it. Now there's no video out with this, but if you keep that gasket in place, it does then have a waterproof rating of IP68. So it can handle up to 1.5 meters and for up to 30 minutes. So if you accidentally drop it into uh, a sink or into a swimming pool and you get it out as fast as you can, it'll be perfectly fine there. So loudspeakers, we've got uh, one down here, one at the top, dual loudspeakers, 32 megapixel front facing camera. On the left hand side, we have this button that is dedicated to whatever you want to assign to it. So you can use that to launch applications. Our SIM tray right here does not even need a SIM tray tool. You can just pull that out if you've got long enough fingernails, which I do. So just slot it out. You can see there's a gasket around it and you'll see that it does take two nano SIMs or one nano SIM and a micro SD card. So of course it is a phone that has plenty of compromises, especially with the size of it and the weight of it, but you gain that just crazy battery life. So it's got a 2200 milliamp hour battery and I'm only losing about 9% every day using this. This is using data with 5G and a bit on wireless, not so much gaming. If you game a little bit, it'll bring the battery life down a bit, but it's still absolutely crazy. So people that use this phone for just light use, well, it'll probably last you around 10 days before you need to charge it because of that crazy 2,200 milliamp hour capacity. Battery bank size. Speaking of battery banks, yes, you can use it to charge your devices. It does have reverse charging. So I'll just plug in this phone right here and you'll see that that is now going to turn on and it will start to charge it. The display of the VMAX is using is an IPS panel. Now you do have your standard options in here. You can see under advanced, uh, you'll see that we've got an override for our refresh rate, which is located here. But we also get the 90 Hertz option, which a lot of brands don't give us. So that's great that that is there included. 
Now with display there too, I have noticed that we don't seem to have any options, at least that I can find in here to go along and tweak uh, where you'd want to change the colors, for example. So you've got uh, your, you can see here, LED settings because there's a notification LED just located up here. You may have seen that flash, but there doesn't seem to be that mirror vision option where we can go through and adjust the white balance, for example. That's not present in here. There is, of course, adaptive brightness here. There is an ambient light sensor located up in the top. I've got it off at the moment just because I wanted to manually, manually control the brightness here, of course. Now, touch gestures are working well, and I'll just show you some real-world images uh, that it's okay, this display. My only complaint about it is it's not really bright enough. Uh, in direct sunlight, you can see now, you do suffer a little bit to try and make it out clearly. That's because, according to my equipment here, it's got a top brightness, this is measuring white, of around about 269 nits only. Ideally, I like to see at least 300, so I wish it was a little bit brighter, the screen. Maybe with a firmware update, they can allow us to push a little bit more brightness. So it's not bad, as you can see. Touch response is good. Everything does seem to be fluid. It's just really that brightness. This phone is powered by the Dimensity 1080. Now that's an octa-core and it does have Mali G680 MC4 graphics with it. And everything seems to be quite smooth and fluid. One of the reasons behind that is they don't have their own bloated launcher that they are using here. And it just retains that performance, I think, because they haven't gone with something that's quite heavy on RAM. Speaking of RAM, we've got plenty with this model. We've got 12 gigabytes and they also do have an additional quite a bit, eight I think it is, you can scale up to with the caching there, the virtual memory on top. So performance wise, very good. We even do have FM radio on board. And I've just noticed that it seems to be faster than even MIUI from Xiaomi running the same chipset. I've noticed with MIUI 14 with the Dimensity 1080, it can sometimes be a little bit laggy, but this forced to the 120 Hertz with the 12 gigabytes of RAM, I'm quite pleased with the UI performance. I really have not noticed any issues. Now, when you are multitasking, going over to your recent apps, they don't tend to close off those apps too quickly. If they are system apps, like Clock, for example, that is a system app, that will not be closed off. But anything else that I've been running recently, like Genshin Impact, uh, yeah, that has closed. I will need to re reload that there. So plenty of RAM and just overall decent performance with the UI. At the time of this video, I have received one firmware update already. I don't believe this will probably end up getting Android 13. It's currently on Android 12, but a lot of the more affordable brands like Doogie don't tend to push out major updates. I do hope it gets Android 13, but I won't be crossing my fingers for that. But great to see that they at least do offer bug fixes and an over-the-air update system. Now, one big positive of this, positive of this model here is there's no bloatware. So these two apps I installed myself, that is all the stock apps you get. And I don't really consider any of those to be bloat, which is good because there are a lot of brands that just put so much rubbish on there. So they'll pre-install like TikTok, Booking.com, all sorts of stuff that you're probably never going to use and you have to go and remove it. Well, not here. It's basically stock Android. So sadly, we only have a Widevine level three cert here. So this means that Netflix, Amazon Prime Video will all be in standard definition. You can see, this is when I loaded up next Netflix here, that it only gave me standard definition. This is through the settings in Netflix. You can review and take a look at the playback specification there, and it's only standard definition. And that also accounts for Amazon Prime Video and everything else, just standard. So Camera 2 API, if you did want to run, say, third-party camera apps like Gcam Ports or Open Camera, you can. And we've got full support here. Not quite level 3, but full is still enough for us to run those ports there, which is good. And the internal storage is very quick here. You can see, take a look at the, well, the random reads and writes aren't bad, but the sequentials nearing there, 1,000 megabytes per second. And it's not going to slow it down. So you can see here with Antutu that it's a decent score that it gets. So just over half a million here. Mid-range chipset, but the Dimensity, that Dimensity 1080, does fare pretty well. Performance has been solid, as I mentioned. And it's got the 12 gigabytes of RAM, which aids it. How are the speakers now with it? So we've got dual loudspeakers at the top. They are very loud. They're lacking a little bit in bass. I wouldn't rate them as being super high quality, 
but they certainly have us covered when it comes to that loud volume, as you'll hear. So I'll just play this sample track now at 100% volume. As for gaming performance, one of the most demanding games is Genshin Impact that I always test out in my more recent mobile reviews, and it handles it well. There are, yes, a few frame dips, but overall the performance is good, and everything in the Play Store you can play here with the VMAX. Moving over to our cameras now with the VMAX. So the front-facing camera here can shoot the 32 megapixel sensor here, 1080p video. Now I do have enabled, in the settings I did find EIS, which is our electronic image stabilization, but it doesn't seem to be working with the front-facing camera or the rear, as you'll see shortly. And it's overexposing a little bit my face, especially now if I turn and face the sun there, a little overexposed. So this is 1080p quality with the front-facing camera here. It doesn't seem to have any electronic image stabilization, so that's why I rate the quality as pretty average here, because you do really need that electronic image stabilization, otherwise it looks a little bit shaky, this footage. Now the audio bit rate is good, it's 256 kilobits per second, it's a little bit windy at the moment, so we will be picking up a probably a little bit of wind noise there. Focus, I haven't really seen any issues at all with it, doesn't seem to be too bad. As long as you're in good light, the focus is good. As for stills, it can take a decent shot, the 108 megapixel camera, as you can see from this flower. This shot here is the ultra wide, but look around the ocean there, it does look a little bit blurry, so not perfect. This is another ultra wide, 16 megapixel shot. It's okay, it was a little bit overcast at the time. Bright colorful flowers here, again looking pretty decent from the 108 megapixel camera. Now this is the selfie camera now, Quite a detailed looking shot from that 32 megapixel sensor. Portrait mode, the stitching definitely needs a bit of work. Look at my daughter's hair on the left there. And this is the night camera. So that 20 megapixel camera taken in complete darkness. It takes these okay looking pictures, but do remember that was completely dark. And then low light photos, if you hold it really still, it can actually give a excellent result like this photo here, which was quite a surprise. So Doogie's VMAX is a phone that really is like walking around with a battery bank that has a phone built into it because it really is just amazing how long this will go on a single charge is absolutely nuts. So who would this phone be for then? I think for people that are off the grid for a long time that just simply cannot charge their phone, maybe you're a camper and you want a phone that of course does have dual band GPS that's built into it, but you want amazing battery life. You don't want to have to charge for a week and this is it, because I only lose about 8 9% per day with the VMAX here. So I think it's for people like that, maybe tradesmen as well that want the durability of it. Again, don't want to have to charge every single day or even every second day, just want to charge once a week. IP68, the military grade drop resistance uh, to it as well, very handy to have. So it's really got a case on it itself, the design of it having the rubber on the top of it. Gorilla Glass 5 on the front will help out. And the things that the phone isn't so great at, well, that is, for me, the cameras. They're okay. You can take a, a, a decent kind of photo with the main camera. The ultra-wide and then the selfie cameras, and especially that video performance, is lacking a little bit. I do hope that Doogie can improve that with a firmware update. Other areas like the screen. Being an outdoor phone, that it doesn't fare so well when you are in direct sunlight, as I showed you from that little sample there, that you struggle a little bit to make out the screen with its brightness. Well, where I am indoors, if you use it indoors or in the shade, then it's fine, you can read it, it's just really in direct sunlight there. And of course the obvious one, being such a large phone with a 2200 milliamp hour battery capacity, it is a little bulky, very bulky, very heavy. It's in fact the largest and chunkiest phone that I have reviewed. So I do hope that you liked this video. It covered all of the bases, I hope, and what you can expect out of the VMAX here from Doogie. Thank you so much for watching.